Hello friends, this is Maxi Gorov and you're watching a video about an original outdoorsman dish that I called a vertical shish kebab. It is essentially a potato spiral with a hot dog inside. I cook different variations of the vertical shish kebab dish in the video. I have baked spiral potato skewers on a traditional grill with great results, but it was never quite as delicious as the spiral potato shish kebab cooked in the vertical grill. I'm sure by the time you finish watching this video, you will agree with me. We are going to need a vertical log stove to do the job. There are over 10 different ways how you can assemble such a grill called Finnish or Swedish log stove. I've shown a few log stove designs in my previous videos about making fire carved log furniture. You can either make crisscross rib cuts in a log section like I did while making my logs tool or you can make a priming cut for an oval hole with the tip of your chainsaw. To make a round hole, you will need to drill a priming hole before starting a fire in it. While making my outdoorsman fire carved furniture, I could have easily cooked my vertical shish kebab. However, preparing such log stoves is labor intensive, requiring tools as well as having to find a large log section. Here I'm using a Finnish log torch to heat up my tent. I chopped a log section into three pieces, got rid of the core and clamped the pieces together into a wooden chimney using my clamper. As you could see, one would need a lot of time and a large section of a dry wood to make such a grill. I decided to simplify the preparation process. This time I was far away from my camp and didn't have my chainsaw at hand. It is tiresome to saw a large section of wood using a handsaw, so I decided to use a new approach instead. We will need three small sections of wood to make a simplified version of a vertical grill. The best saw for the task is a bow saw, sometimes called a frame saw or a coping saw. I already have the saw's blade and now I will assemble the frame. I'll use this bird cherry stick. We will cut it into three pieces, two blade supports and one spreader. It is important to make the spreader to be as long as the blade. I made a few finishing touches to make the improvised DIY bow saw look neat. Then I made two cuts in the blade support pieces for the blade. You can either split the end of the blade support piece to make a slit to accept the blade or saw it. Both ways work fine, but since I had a mini saw in my multi tool, I used it on one side. Next, I will assemble the frame using mortise and tenon joinery. You can simplify these joints by making simple butt joints, but I wanted to make a foldable frame saw, so I took my time to make it right. I will make mortise in the side support piece and then shape a tenon on the spreader. To make the mortise, I just drilled a small shallow hole with the tip of my knife. To make a tenon, I used my mini saw and knife. First, I made a circular cut on the tip of the spreader and then shaped the tenon with my knife. Otherwise, a larger mortise can weaken the blade support pieces and result in splitting them when you start tightening the line. Please be careful with the knife not to hurt yourself and not to remove too much wood in the mortise. Now the tenon goes snugly into mortise. It is important that the tenon should be shorter than the depth of the mortise to prevent splitting of the blade support members. This tried and proved joint will reliably hold the saw's frame together. Following these simple principles, we will be able to apply more pressure on the blade support members without fearing to crack them. The higher the tension of the bow saw blade within reason, the better it will work. We just need to tighten the bow saw line and it is ready for sewing logs. Considering I made my frame saw on the fly from materials I could find in the forest, it is not bad and feels surprisingly good in my hands. It's been raining for the past 20 days and it will not be easy to find dry firewood here. For example, this tree was soaked and I didn't even try to make fire with it. My bow saw is very compact when folded. I wanted to show the assembly steps. As you can see, it only takes a few minutes to get my bow saw ready for work. As for me, I find primitive DIY tools very attractive. I don't quite know what it is. Perhaps the natural curvy lines or the brutality of raw wood used to make it. It is worth mentioning here that the bow saw makes a very thin cut and produces very little wooden shavings. It is the most economical and productive among traditional hand saws. Perhaps you've noticed that I'm sewing the log without supporting it and my bow saw doesn't get stuck in the cut. This is an additional bonus of the bow saw. 
Had you used a regular hacksaw, it would have gotten stuck in the log under pressure. It took me a while to get ready for sawing the log, but now we will be moving fast. I cut three thin log sections and now we will connect them with my DIY log dogs. I've made them for a totally different project and will keep it a secret for now, but since there weren't any in use at the moment, I decided to use them for my vertical grill assembly. By the way, if you decide to make such log dogs for a vertical grill, make them wider. 20 to 25 cms will be ideal. You're going to need six log dogs total. The wider log dogs will be more comfortable to use and they will make the grill more stable at the bottom. Now we'll put three log sections together, leaving a small gap in the middle, and we'll connect them with six log dogs, three on the top and three at the bottom. By using the bottom log dogs, I elevated the grill above the ground, which will improve convection and will not burn the grass. While the fire is getting started and our grill is reaching the right temperature, it is time to prepare our potato. I cut a crude spiral on the skewered potato. I happen to have a piece of pipe with me and I decided to use it for cutting an opening for the hot dog in the potato. I saved the potato core for a later meal as you can't afford to be wasteful while living in the wilderness for a while. If you don't have a skewer, any skinny stick with one side tweak in the shape of a hook would do to cook my spiral potato hot dog dish. All you have to do is to debark the improvised skewer and push it through the center of the hot dog. It is important to center the hot dog on the skewer so it will grill evenly later. Now you just slide the potato on the skewered hot dog. By now the improvised grill would have already burned red embers on its inside and is hot enough to grill our vertical shish kebab. I put a stick on two log dogs to hang the skewer. Even heat distribution begins to heat the hot dog, which eventually progresses to fully cooking. Even with the little fat in the hot dog, the small amount that renders out saturates in the potato from its side to add meaty flavor. So essentially the potato gets both baked and smoked. While there is not much smoke emitted from the vertical grill, it is enough to give the dish a smoked flavor. Make sure that the distance between the log sections are no less than 4 to 5 cm's. Otherwise, the grill would have produced twice as much heat and the kebab would have cooked too quickly on the outside, leaving the inside raw. The gaps also allow you to view inside the grill to see the progression of cooking. With this vertical grill, you can even cook large pieces of meat, such as wild game. Now, that it's done cooking, we can taste the dish. While I was making a bow saw and a vertical grill, I got hungry. My Bushman shish kebab tasted like heaven. I think this is the best hot dog I've eaten in my life, perhaps due to the beautiful surrounding scenery and my hunger after laboring. Nevertheless, the spiral potato tasted even better with its smoky and meaty flavors. Only when I finished eating, I realized I should have suspended some sort of fatty meat atop the potato to have made it even more tasty and buttery. I did have some marinated meat a plant to prepare after this shish kebab, but after I ate that spiral potato, instead I just took two fatty pieces of meat to cook over the spiral potato and grilled it up. I spread the spiral potato evenly on the skewer and put the assembly into the grill. Now you can probably see how the sizzling fat runs down the potato as it cooks, basting it with a meaty taste. Believe me, the smell of the cooking made my mouth water. It is different from the smell of regular shish kebabs cooked on traditional grills, because those shish kebabs drip fat on the coals rather than self-basting. Friends, it's a pity I can't share a piece of this dish with each of you, but I hope you can all recreate it along with me. I would recommend you to eat this dish with a fresh tomato. Trust me, it is so delicious. And note, I couldn't be biased by my hunger when I ate the second shish kebab, because I already had a filled stomach from the first one.
The one fault of this dish is it can result in gluttony because it is hard to stop eating it, which most likely will not help you lose weight. Before I finish this video, I wanted to mention a bonus of this grill's design. It virtually leaves no marks on grass. It didn't burn the roots, so the grass will regrow in a couple of weeks. Here, I just wanted to show you something funky. I'm gonna ignite smoke. It ignites, then it goes back to smoke, and we can just ignite it again, and it keeps burning. To summarize, I'm pretty happy with this vertical grill design, but I'm sure you can make it even better than mine. For example, I experimented with a new grill design using a few skewers to vertically cook hot dogs and eggplants together. If you have any experiences with vertical grill designs or dishes, I encourage you to share your ideas and experiences with me in the comment section. Two heads are better than one. If you like this video and you want to help to make this channel successful, please hit the repost button. I would be most grateful. Lastly, check out my other videos if you want to see more content like this.